This is the spookiest shirt I own. So perfect for the end of October. Oh. Hey guys, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we have my October wrap up. on Thursday because that is October 31st and I post on Thursdays and I just thought it was the perfect time to do this. However, I'm actually also filming this on October 31st. I was really, really hoping to film this yesterday. However, Presley was being a little bit clingy, didn't really want to be put down. He's actually over here right now being such a good boy. So we'll see how long that actually goes on for. Um, but also, um, because he was being so clingy, I decided to read one more short story, which I will talk about near the end of this because I go in order from what I read um, during the month. And I ended up really wanting to finish it before I filmed this video because it was a short story. I should be able to do that. I did. We're here now, let's get into it. So the first book that I read this month was Buffy the Vampire Slayer Volume 1. So this is going to have the issues 1 through 4 of the new Buffy the Vampire Slayer comic books from Boom Comics. These are created by Joss Whedon, uh, Jordi Belair, and Dan Mora is the illustrator on these ones. This one I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. I actually did not mind that this is basically reimagining Buffy the Vampire Slayer in a more modern setting. They do have obviously some changes because of that. Buffy already has a job at a fast food restaurant in this one, whereas I believe it was season six in the TV show where she got a job that way. Willow already has a girlfriend who is a brand new character we've never even heard of in this one. Spike and Drusilla show up much earlier than they did before. And Robin, who was the principal in season seven, is a student at the school as well. Um, so the characters, I feel like, definitely have retained who they are. <laughs> My dog keeps circling the camera because his food bowl is like right next to it and I don't know if he's trying to eat or not but he just keeps circling around. I'm sure you guys can hear his little claws. Um, but they definitely retained their characterization. I really did enjoy this one here. <laughs> really, you want to talk too? This is going to be just an interesting video, I have a feeling. But again, yes, definitely retain their characterization. I really did enjoy this one, and I really enjoyed the art style. It is so nice and clean, and the colors are fantastic, and I just absolutely fell in love with this one. And so this is the first volume. I have talked about the issues of these previously on my channel because I have been collecting the variant covers that Kevin Wada has illustrated. He is the same cover artist illustrator of the Carry On and Wayward Son books. Um, and so I've been collecting the issues, but I didn't want to read them until I had the volumes just because I like to have multiple at a time. So I did read this one because I picked it up, I want to say last month, gave it five out of five stars. And then because I read that one, I ended up breaking into my five, six, and seven issues. Um, so the next volume of this one, I believe is supposed to come out maybe like in February. I could be wrong about that, but it's going to have four more issues. So five, six, seven, and eight. My issue eight has not come in yet. Sorry, these are in the plastic sleeve. Um, actually, I probably should take them out. Just a second. Okay, well, so here we have issue number five. This has Angel on it. Um, one interesting fact for me is I'm pretty sure Angel hasn't shown up in any of the issues yet. I've only read up through issue seven, um, but he's on a cover already, and Spike, who has shown up, in this series already. Does not have a variant cover coming out yet until nine or 10, I wanna say. It's, it's eventually. Um, these issues, I don't know if it's because of the issues, but I do feel like they slowed down a little bit in the storyline, like issue number seven. And now, because I'm holding him, let's just adjust the camera so you can see him a little better otherwise it's just gonna be a, a head so issue number 
7. I do feel like that one, for whatever reason, really sped through... Or not necessarily sped through the story, but it was such a small snippet of the story. I don't feel like that one was really, oh. really good. Um, I want to say I gave actually all three of these issues a four star. It, they could go down to a three or three and a half. I do still want to see where this story is going. And they have definitely jumped away from the original Buffy show by comic issue number five. I'm not going to give you any spoilers for that, but I am very interested to see where it's going. My biggest issue, and I don't want to be that person that, like, is shitting on people, but they changed the illustrator from the first four issues to a new one for apparently the rest of the series, and I'm absolutely bummed about it because it is not an art style that jives with me. The characters don't really look like the characters anymore. And even though I am interested in the story, I am a very visual person when it comes to comics, graphic novels, manga, and I don't get as much enjoyment when they don't look as good. So for an example, we have Willow on this, I think for you guys, it's the left side of the page. And she just, her eyes look absolutely crazy. And the thing is, is a lot of the characters, especially their eyes, look absolutely crazy. Like they're on drugs or something. And I am just so bummed about it because the story, again, I don't like reading them in issues as much as a volume because I feel like it breaks up the story a little bit too much. The story is still interesting. The art style is making me take away at least a star because it is not nearly as enjoyable reading for me anymore and I'm just a little bit bummed about it. The next thing I read in October was the third volume of the Umbrella Academy. This is Hotel Oblivion. I gave this a three out of five stars. I keep reading these and I keep giving them a three out of five stars. I absolutely loved the Umbrella Academy Netflix series. If I was gonna rate that, gave it five out of five stars. I have rewatched it at least five times. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited for season two. Um, and because of that, I wanted to read the first two volumes. And I believe that was a few months ago. I talked about it in my wrap up. It was basically as soon as I had watched the TV show, I picked them up because I wanted to read them. And so the first two volumes basically get torn apart and put back together in a very interesting way to make the TV show. So this one here is a completely new volume. None of this stuff has happened in the show or anything like that. It is completely brand new. And it all sort of revolves around Hotel Oblivion, which is a hotel in, in some sort of either parallel world or a different planet or something that Reginald Hargreaves put the, like, bad guys away in instead of having them killed off when the Umbrella Academy would like foil their plans. My biggest issue with this book, and I'm sure I would enjoy it more maybe if I reread it, is that it seems like all of the people from the Umbrella Academy are in different directions. So we have like number one and number two off doing something. We have uh, Vanya off doing something. We have number five off doing something with number three. So they are all in different groupings and it's all in different parts. And we sort of jump from each character to each character to each character. And it goes cyclical like that until near the end, we actually see that everything is connected. Oh. And then also at the very, very end, it definitely ends on a cliffhanger that makes me want to read more because we got introduced to new concepts and ideas and characters that I feel like is gonna be very, very interesting. So normally for me, when I do unhauls, if anything is a three or lower, I get rid of it and get it off my shelves. <sighs> so far, all three of these volumes have been three stars, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to actually get rid of them because I'm still super, super interested to see what's going on with these. Um, so yeah, mediocre. This one's probably closer to a three and a half. Oh, you just don't want to be here, huh? He woke up from his nap recently, and so I figured let's try to do this. We'll see. Um, but yeah, closer maybe to a three and a half, but still not amazing. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we got our Heroes Never Sleep shirt on. 
which <laughs> he sleeps. He just doesn't like to sleep alone very much during the day. So his naps are usually on me, which is why we're not filming during nap time. But he's being cute. He was so cute. But we're supposed to talk about books, not you. Okay. The next books that I ended up reading, I ended up reading four of them for the Spookathon. I will actually link my Spookathon vlog down below where I give all of my thoughts on these. So I'm going to go through these ones a little bit quicker, hopefully, um, than in the vlog. But I do have four books that I read for that one. In no particular order, because this is just how they're stacked on my shelf, we have The Drifting Classroom by Kazuo Umez or Umezu. There are conflicting last names all over Goodreads for the different editions of this, but this is a horror manga that had been compared to Junji Ito. I gave this, I believe, I think I said a 3 out of 5. This is another one similar to The Umbrella Academy where it wasn't amazing, but it ended in such a way that I'm definitely going to need to read more. Um, but this one all revolves around a school that basically one day disappears and leaves a gaping hole in the ground in Japan. And the people that still live around there, like the parents and everything, think there might have been a gas explosion. However, we do find out that this school was basically transported to a desert wasteland that ends up being sometime in the future. This just so you guys know, has lots of harm against children, so definite trigger warnings for anything like that. Um, also, suicide, and it is very graphic in nature as well. Um, there were some things in here I did not agree with, and I definitely talked about those in my Spookathon vlog. I don't want to really say too much more because it was dear, because it was definitely near the end of the book, and I don't want to give any spoilers, but it is very weird. And very graphic and not necessarily as horror-y as Junji Ito's work. Um, the art style is not necessarily my favorite art style. It is a little bit sketchy and it reminds me of like older manga. However, I do believe I saw that this was actually from like 2007 maybe, so not super old. This is the first volume out of I think three total. These are like collector edition type ones. I really like the cover. I picked it up. I read it. It was three stars, but I do think I'm going to need to read the next one. Then I also read Final Girls by Riley Sager. This one I gave four out of five stars. I actually listened to most of this as an audiobook while I was doing housework or driving to and from places. And, um, I think the audiobook slowed down the pacing of this for me. So the first two-thirds or three-quarters of it. I liked, but it wasn't amazing. The last one-third or one-quarter, however much it actually was, was really good. I loved the pacing of it. I really enjoyed the reveals at the end. This one basically deals with our main character, who is a final girl. She had a sort of event happen at a cottage in the past where all of her friends were killed and she was the lone survivor of final girl. And there are a couple other final girls in this story that one of them basically commits suicide. And because of that, the story here gets the ball rolling. We have multiple points of view as in the fact that most of this story does take place in the present day with our main character in the first person. But then we do have some sort of flashbacks in the past at the cabin in third person. I personally would have preferred if it was just a story at the cabin. I personally would have preferred if it was just a story at the cabin um, and sort of like almost like a horror slasher type of thing because I feel like for me those were the most interesting. However, we definitely needed the fact that she couldn't remember a lot of what happened and the dual perspectives, points of view in order for the reveals in this to really work. And that part I really, really did enjoy. Without all that, I think I would have given it a three because it wasn't amazing. It was just sort of good. But I really, really did enjoy those reveals <laughs> at the end. And so I did give it a four out of five stars. I'm definitely looking forward to reading more from Riley Sagar. Then we have The Babysitter's Coven by Kate Williams. I think this is another... <laughs> Hi, baby. He's trying to stand up on me. He thinks he can do a lot of stuff that he's actually not really able to do yet. He's only three months old tomorrow. 
Um, this one I believe I did give another 4 out of 5 stars. This is a mix of like Babysitter's Club, Buffy the Vampire Slayer with Witches. This one, again, was sort of slow for the first half. We did get a little bit of witchy stuff going on at first, but it just took a while to really ramp up and get to the actual action of this book. Once that happened, it was really good. I love the writing style. Um, it definitely leaves it where there should be more, because I believe in the back it says the next one's coming out fall 2020. I am definitely going to pick that up, because it was just a really nice, fun book. But like I said, the first half was a little bit slow. I think the main reason it was slow is because the author put in a lot of outfit descriptions. She billed it sort of as our main character sort of wanting to be a fashion designer or something when she grows up and her and her best friend do this putting outfit things together. They make a name for the outfit and then they describe the outfit. The only problem I had is that a lot of outfit descriptions happened at the beginning of the book and it felt like we were getting them like every other page or two and it was just too much for me but once we actually got into the action and like the magic system really enjoyable the last book i read during the spookathon was the haunted by daniel vega this one again i also gave i think a four stars <laughs> or it might have been a three and a half i don't fully remember um but this one deals with a character who because of some things that happened in her past at school, her and her family ends up moving to a house in a new town, and they end up in the haunted house in the new town. There had been murders in that house, there are ghosty elements. Danielle Vega did the Merciless series, and I do personally feel like I liked the Merciless books better. They were a little bit more graphic and horror-y, although this one did have the horror elements as well. The main reason I'm not giving it a higher rating is that it is a quite short book. I felt the ending wrapped up a little bit too quickly. It could have had more descriptions and more events that were happening, but also there was a love triangle in this that was just sort of thrown in. It was barely really talked about, but at the same time we were supposed to assume that there were feelings between some of these characters that I just don't think that there was enough time dedicated to it to actually make feel real. Um, but the horror aspects were done pretty well. And then, let me pull this up really quick so I don't get anything wrong. I read two short stories from the Forward collection, which I believe there are six in seven. No, just six. Six in the collection. These are like short stories that you can get for free if you have Amazon Prime. And so I tried... I believe there was a horror -y Halloween one last year that I tried that was okay. These ones are supposed to be like sci-fi looking forward into the future of humanity, that kind of thing. And so I read the first two that are listed in the series. The first one I read was Ark and that was by Veronica Roth. This one I gave a three out of five stars. Um, these ones come with audio as well if you want to download that because of the fact that it's like free with Amazon Prime, they come with audio, you get the book. Um, and so I did try to listen to the audio because sometimes that's just easier with him. And the first one, I had to stop listening to the audio because it was just very, very slow. But it also just turned out that this book in general felt sort of slow. This one here is basically about, I think like an asteroid or something is coming to hit Earth. The Earth had enough time to get most of humanity away from the planet but what they do have is some people still on the planet who are technically orphans but they're also scientists and our main character is helping on the fauna arc categorize samples of plants and they're doing all this on earth they're supposed to be leaving the planet uh, i believe like the day before earth's destruction there's also a fauna one did I get that right? She's working on the flora arc because it's the plants. There's also a fauna one somewhere else. Um, but this book was basically just her categorizing plants and talking to another scientist about plants. So it was very, very slow. I didn't really feel like there were too many scientific elements in this. I felt like it was more dealing with grief because of the fact that like everybody that had to be on this part of the scientific thing before the asteroid comes like everybody else has left they were only allowed to be there if they were like alone orphans widowed widowers whatever um and so i do feel like it probably had a place 
as a book or a short story should I say but it was not for me I didn't really understand too much of why it was written except for the grief part it definitely didn't feel like a sci-fi ish sort of thing to me um, and so I gave it three out of five stars I should also just note that I feel like a lot of short stories are not fleshed out enough for me and so I don't usually like reading them however that then brings us to the second short story that I read from this collection which is the one that I read yesterday when he was being a little clingy and um, didn't want me to film and I'm actually really happy that I read it it was Summer Frost by Blake Crouch I have heard of Blake Crouch before, never read any of his books, even though I have a couple on my TBR list on Goodreads, um, and I just don't know why I never picked them up, but this one I gave a 5 out of 5 stars, absolutely phenomenal. I completely forgot it was a short story as I was reading it because everything was so well done. I was very attached to the characters, I could feel the emotions, I loved this so much. This one is about AI, so it definitely felt more sci-fi for me, which is what I was definitely looking for from the series. This one is basically about an AI that sort of happened to come about from a video game. Our main character, Riley, is a developer, and once they realize that this AI is a thing, they take them out of the video game simulation, and Riley is basically tasked with connecting with this AI, teaching this AI, and all that comes with it. And this story is told over years. I think the whole short story takes place over like eight years. Um, they definitely get into pronouns as well because there is a part, and I just wanted to mention this for anybody out there, I don't know how well done it was, but I appreciated that they at least did this. They get into a part where the AI in the video game was an NPC who was a female, Maxine, goes by Max. And our main character refers to them as a female quite often until one part, I think sort of early in the story, the AI basically mentions, I'm not human, I'm not female or male, I just am who I am. And so they then get referred to as they or them throughout the rest of the story, except for by a couple people that don't really like the fact that our main character is working with an AI. So I would love to know what other people had thought about that. I'm gonna definitely go through reviews later. Um, I love the ending of the story because it definitely starts to ramp up the action as well. But most of the story was the connection between Riley and Max. And I don't know, it was just really good. I could not put it down. That one I feel like was also slightly longer than ARC. Probably took me closer to two hours total. I did listen to a little bit of the audiobook as well. Um, which was not horrible, but I did ramp up the speed to like 1.5 because that's my preferred speed. And I want to say maybe because it was from the Amazon Kindle app sort of thing instead of like when I usually listen to audiobooks I do Scribd. Um, it felt a little bit more computerized once it was ramped up. Like the um, cadence of the words was not as smooth as when I ramp it up a little bit on Scribd. So that was off a little bit but I want to say it was maybe the technology it was done on and not the audiobook. Although an audiobook about an AI being a little bit computerized and techie would completely make sense. So those were everything I read in October, which is actually quite good. I'm definitely getting more into the routine of having him and trying to read. The reason I got so many books read during the Spookathon though was because of my husband allowing me to take some time after he had been put to bed to go into another room and read. And if he woke up a little prematurely, my husband was there. However, he's also been sleeping closer to four hours at a time in the last week. Um, so hopefully he's going to get to a point where we can put him down and not have to worry about him waking up too much um, right after he's been laid down. We still have to a little bit, but once he's out, he's usually out for a little while. So we're getting there. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos. I do have videos up Mondays and Thursdays. Hopefully this one goes up on Thursday as well. And so I will see you then. Bye.